Quit over justifying your boundaries. Quit explaining why you are drawing lines and creating boundaries in your life. Most people do not have good boundaries. And a lot of people that do have good boundaries are overly aggressive about protecting those boundaries, and that creates drama. In my healing, coaching practice, one of the first things that I have to deal with with a lot of clients is their problem with boundary setting. And one of the biggest problems in setting and maintaining boundaries is the feeling that people have that they have to explain themselves, that they have to explain their boundaries. And in this video, I want to tell you why that's wrong. You don't need to explain yourself as much as you think you do. I'm not saying have zero explanation, but most people think they have far more of a debt towards other people in terms of what they are supposed to explain to other people about their decision making and their boundaries. And the fact is, no such debt really exists in real life, okay? When you have a boundary, a clear boundary, a non-dramatic boundary, you're allowed to do whatever you want with that, okay? You're allowed to say, um, everybody has to take an oath of allegiance to me to come into my house. Okay, most people are going to not go to your house because of that, right? They're going to be like, that's a crazy boundary. But you can make it. You're just going to lose a lot of people. So the thing is, you're allowed to make whatever boundary you want. And I would say, don't go overboard with them. But also realize that the people that you're making these boundaries, setting these boundaries with, probably have some kind of narcissistic tendency. Otherwise, you might not feel the need to set these boundaries. I'm not saying they're a full-blown narcissist, but everybody's kind of a narcissist. And everybody has certain narcissistic tendencies. So, what are you going to get when you set boundaries, new boundaries, on people that are in your life? You're going to get the responses of a narcissist. You are going to get gaslighting. You are going to get the person not being able to look clearly at their own behavior and analyze themselves. Okay, you're... to get denial, you're going to get demonization, you are going to get all of the things that narcissists do, you're going to get some of that. Not with everybody, not with every boundary, but it's something to look out for. For example, you set a boundary. You say you have to, um, you have to call before you come over. Please call before you come over. And the person comes over without calling. What do you do? Um, maybe you remind them. Maybe you don't answer the door. It depends on what their behavior's been in the past and how much they disregard your boundaries. At some point, if they do it numerous times, you're going to have to not answer the door even though they know you're home. And you're just going to be like, look, I've told you a few times, please call before you come. 
this is the fourth time that you've come without calling. So it's just automatic. I don't answer the door. Okay. Now they're going to want to make you out to be the asshole, right? Usually the person disregarding your boundaries, they're going to gaslight you by saying, these are crazy boundaries. That's number one. Number two, you have no right to make this type of boundary against me because of our history and blah, blah, blah. Okay. And so what are they going to do? So this is the gaslighting of like, what are you doing? What are you thinking? This is crazy. Okay. Then they're going to accuse you of being aggressive in some way, negative, destructive, non-caring, whatever. So either they're going to be pissed or they're going to be a victim. And oftentimes they're going to go back and forth. So why not explain your boundaries very clearly? Because every point you make, and I'm not saying give zero explanation and be like, this is my, it's my way or the highway. And this is just the rule. I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying, you give one little explanation, you indicate that this is not up for debate, and then, you know, if you want to apologize for it or whatever, if you want to blow it up like, yeah, I'm just uptight, I just need you to call before you come. Can you please do that? If the person disagrees, then you might need to say, Okay, if you can't call before you come and you're telling me right now you're not going to call before you come, then you can't come. We'll meet elsewhere. We'll meet at another location. But you can never come to my house now. Because I need to know, because of whatever weird thing I have, I need to know who's coming by. I need to not be surprised by a knock on the door. Call it P PTSD call it control issues, call it anal retentiveness, whatever. It's just what I need. Sorry, it's what I need, okay? If you come and you haven't called, I'm not going to answer the door. And I'm going to be pissed that you, that you violated my boundary, okay? So can we please just agree this to do, the, do it this way? You know, sorry if it's an inconvenience, but this is what I need. Okay. That's all you got to really explain. You don't have to get into all the details of your thought process because, again, what you say can and will be used against you. Any point that you make, well, you know, last week you came over and it was kind of late and I was getting ready for bed and then I ended up like being tired at work the next day. Oh, well, okay. I won't do that, right? They're going to want to make little ad hoc agreements. So now you don't need the boundary anymore. But all of those little ad hoc agreements, those are going to be little areas of drama in the future. You need a nice, See? clean, smooth surface boundary. A non-stick boundary, <laughs> right? You need Teflon. And you need to just be like, call first. And don't call and leave a message. I'm coming right now. Right? Call and reach me. Get a response of, okay, great. Then you may come over. Well, you never did that before. Why now? I don't know. I'm just weird that way, right? The thing is, explaining yourself around your boundaries is going to cause you drama. Especially the more narcissistic the person is, the more entitled the person is, the more they're going to freak out on any boundary setting by you. If you cannot set boundaries, here's what happens. You bleed power. 
emotional power, physical power, spiritual power, intuitive power. You become a leaky bucket. And manifestation, creativity, a lot of your goals in life will go, well, they won't necessarily go totally away, but they will be greatly weakened. And you'll find yourself putting more energy into other people's drama than into your own goals and life purpose. So boundaries are super important in this realm of self-improvement, spirituality, um, manifestation, creativity. You have to have the boundaries. Okay, if you're a concert pianist, people can't just be stopping by in the middle of your practice and saying, oh, take off a half an hour, chill, right? No, you might need four hours at a time to not be bothered. And everybody needs to know, oh, he's a concert pianist. You can't bother him between noon and 5 p.m. ever. You can leave a message. That's all you can do during those hours. And it might stretch farther than 5 p.m. You know what happens then when you set these boundaries, you maintain these boundaries? When you do it right, people around you will help you maintain these boundaries against other people that are trying to break them. Other, they will say, no, 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 don't knock on that door. He won't answer it. Don't bother him now. He's practicing. You don't want to bother him when he's practicing. Like, he's going to be pissed. Don't do that. And they will explain your boundaries. Maybe it's your romantic partner, your spouse. Maybe it's your children. Maybe it's your parents right? You know people with boundaries that nobody messes with. I bet you have at least met some people like that. And maybe they are musicians or they are artists or writers or whatever. Or maybe they are fanatics about working out or whatever it may be. It's like, no, he's not going to come out drinking with us. He's running the marathon tomorrow. No matter how much you beg or plead, or, come on, man, be cool. Come out and drink with us. You're so serious with all your marathon running. Dude, marathon is tomorrow. I'm certainly not going out drinking the night before. <laughs> like, No, I don't care what you say about me. The thing is, most people are leaking energy in a bad way because everybody's agreeing to not have boundaries. Everybody's mutually agreeing to let their leakage slosh all over the place. We've all done it, most of us. And a lot of times we don't have boundaries because we're not serious about certain things. You know, we want somebody to come in and disrupt our workout or our practice or whatever. Give us an excuse to go drinking instead. Oh, man, I missed the damn marathon because I was having so much friends. I was just going to have one beer, but, you know, it was really fun and blah, blah. So you might be using the people breaking your boundaries to actually enable yourself to not do what you set out to do. It's another reason to just have really clear, really Teflon nonstick boundaries because you don't get into that mess. If you say, I don't smoke cigarettes ever, then you're either going to start smoking and you're going to consider one cigarette 
that now you have started smoking, or you are going to say, no, I don't smoke cigarettes. Not even one. Well, the person who says not even one, I think they're probably less likely to start smoking again. The person who dabbles and says, well, I can have one every now and then, well, they are probably going to get re-addicted to nicotine and become a pack-a-day smoker like they were before. So, explaining your boundaries, feeling the need to over-explain your boundaries is a sure way to poke more holes in your bucket, to drain your juice, and to leave you maybe not powerless, but certainly weakened a lot, okay? Look at the people that you know that you have met. They might have pissed you off with their boundaries, but you might find that you respect them more than the average person. But they didn't get those boundaries without a fight. They didn't get those boundaries without people coming at them whining or being aggressive or manipulating in some way. But they protected their boundaries. They maintained their boundaries. And then they got to a certain level where most people would not even think about messing with those boundaries. That's what I'm advocating. So... Don't feel the need to over-explain your boundaries, and you're going to find them a lot easier to maintain. Thanks so much for watching.